your host, Eric Novak, and today we have a special guest. You may see him on New Japan Strong, Ring of Honor, GCW, and almost every independent promotion you know and love. He is the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. <laughs> Hello, it's me, the Filthy Father. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Like I said, it's an honor to have you on. I know everyone's excited to hear this, and you know I'm just happy you said yeah. All right, man. So let's let's start from the beginning. You know, um, as I followed you, I see you always post, you know, a whole bunch of different wrestling, you know, videos that you watch, that you learn from. Obviously, New Japan is one. You know, how did you start becoming a wrestling fan? When did that hit you and, and why? Uh, I have an older brother and sister. And um, they were kind of like, you know, old, like my brother's nine years old. Is my brother nine years or my sister's nine years older than me? And my brother's 13 years older than me. So uh, they were like pretty much alive and going in the 80s, you know? So by the time the early 90s rolled around when I was like a conscious little kid, because I was born in the 80s, uh, pro wrestling was gifted to WWF. I loved like, you know, Hulk Hogan, Ultra Warrior, you know, Macho Man, all that stuff. I was attracted to that renting videotapes from the from the store up the street there's a from where i lived there was a video store uh just you know obsessed with wrestling from an early age wwf wcw eventually ecw the japanese stuff i started becoming a fan of kind of like in middle school discovering like you know fmw and vhs tapes and stuff like that um and then that kind of like just manifested as I got into indie wrestling and, and started to realize there was like, you know, RF video and, and high spots and all these things where you could purchase VHS tapes of, of wrestling footage and stuff like that from, you know, Japan. And I was, was just, I became like a, a sponge for it. I <laughs> became obsessed with it, you know? Yeah, man. New Japan's amazing. And, you know, it's crazy because now you're wrestling on that roster. And, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the, the feeling of doing that. So let's talk about your first match because right now, you know, people watching, they're like, oh, this guy knows exactly what he's doing in the ring, out the ring. Let's talk about your first very own match when you had, you know, no idea what to do or how to do it. How was that like? Mm, definitely, you could never. I don't think you actually, for me personally, it's hard to even enjoy anything that you were that, you, that I did during for such a long period of time because it's there it was such a process of learning and figuring it out you know i uh took a long time to get to this point i didn't become the wrestler i am overnight i wasn't one of those people who was i, I may have been gifted uh physically um fundamental stuff uh learning how to do things in the ring the, the moves and, and, uh, and, and some of the fundamental basic stuff, but learning how to, you know, get to get to this point of the pro wrestler I've become, it took many years oh, and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, you know, focusing, refocusing, training, just, you know, a lot of time spent on the road, a lot of matches, a lot of years so yeah the, for my first match ever looking back on it i mean it's probably probably absolutely terrible honestly i was a kid I, when i first got into a pro wrestling ring and had a match for the first time i was probably maybe 15 years old so <laughs> think about that you know i'm sure there was parts of, about it that were fun and cool and especially at the time you know it feel pretty good but God, it, it had to be pretty much awful, I'm sure. <laughs> or, uh, you know, just very, very young and green. I, I was, you know, I started really at a young age. And at that point, I was just kind of looking for anything, I, any reason I could to get into a ring by any, you know, any opportunity I could. And not saying I didn't have a good trainer. I had a good trainer in the beginning, fundamentals, fundamentally, and, but, you know, I, I have now after years and years of doing this and uh, seeing where the business has gone and, and how it's it's evolved, I, I kind of have a gripe with the, uh, the kind of the system that most people use to train pro wrestlers here in the United States. And 
the ideas behind pro wrestling training, but that's a conversation for a, mm-hmm. a whole different time. So, of course, of course. So one thing I do want to talk about is you know your ring gear. I think I think that deserves you know its own conversation. I loved it. I mean I still do. The kick pads are awesome. You know uh, it represents everything you do in the ring and how you do it. So it's awesome. And uh, the knee pads is what I was curious about. When um when you wear the knee pads with the with the face on it, there's like someone's face on it. What does that represent? Well, that actually was for Team Pazuzu. Um, you know. Uh, Santana and Ortiz from Proud and Powerful. Um, my old tag partner, Jaka, another guy named Pinky Sanchez. We were a group called Team Pazuzu for a few years, and we all uh, wore that knee sleeve on our over our over our knee pad at one time. We all would wear it, and uh, I wore it uh, for a while, even kind of like after Team Pazuzu wasn't really so much a thing and then and then uh i kind of just like eventually retired it but yeah that's what that was awesome. it's the face it's the face of pazuzu from the exorcist the movie the exorcist oh okay okay yeah because i was I, I i like stuff like that you know what i mean like like it's unique stuff that no one has it was really yeah. cool pazuzu, I- the, pazuzu is the lord of all fevers and plagues it's a babylonian sumerian demon Interesting. All right. Interesting uh, knee pad. I mean, look, it's one of a kind at this point now, you know. All right. So I do want to talk about your, you know, first actual big match. What is one moment in your career that you look back at and you're like, this was one of the most accomplishing moments I've had? Even though I know it's such a vague question to go from like, maybe it hasn't happened yet. But it's like, what is one moment that you just feel like your, your hard work, you know, went out and it was showed? I mean, definitely the first match I had in Japan uh, with Yuji Okobayashi was was like a a real like milestone moment of like just that was my life goal. And no matter what happens from here on out, I accomplished my life goal. And it wasn't just like, you know, you hear so many stories of so many just guys that go over to Japan and they just do meaningless stuff or they fly themselves or what they wrestle on like, you know, they do just just do like whatever i was on like an awesome sold out show everyone already knew who i was i was i was i don't know if i was the first match or it was just like i had plenty of time i had a great opponent it's like everything was just set up perfectly for me to introduce myself to the audience there and get over and um you know you only get one chance to make a first impression so you know you don't want to mess that up that's definitely a moment that i look back on it's like wow that was really sweet um that was cool um eventually doing this match that we built up and it became a kind of a thing i wrestled dowsuke sekimoto at a american rana in 2019 that was a really sweet match a really good a really good like cap off moment for just years and years of work with beyond wrestling um oh, man i had a match with uh before i was really con- super consistent working for gcw um when i was really trying to just make sure i was on every show and you know getting my foot in the door there and getting a, a spot as like one of the main guys i had a match with nick gage at the end of like 2018 that was like that was pretty dope i had a lot of i you know so there's there's a lot of milestone moments like that where it's like man that was awesome or that felt or things i could look back on and remember oh man like uh wrestling yuji nagata i mean for new japan um my match with rocky romero at new japan you know defeating all those dudes and like tapping guys out like when i first got there just kicking ass and realizing like yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing this like you know i'm just Anytime, you know, you have a moment like that where it's like, you know, you know, you're, you're leveling up or things are, are going well or like things that you're, you've manifested are kind of like coming to fruition. It's, it's like always good to remember like, man, like I can't believe I'm doing this. And, you know, I say that to myself when I'm wrestling, be in the middle of a match, especially like a tag team match, like a six man tag. I'll be like watching what's going on in the ring and I'll be like, damn. I can't believe I get paid to do this. This is the best ever. This is the just like, well, who's got it better than me right now? Yeah. <laughs> True. So was Japan always your main goal as a as a kid? Was that always you know the the company or a company or you know place you wanted to wrestle for full time? 
Well, you got to think about it like this. You know, I had, I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. It was my dream. But when, um, you know, you're young and you're a kid, you have like an idea of what you want to do, mm -hmm. but you don't know exactly like, you know, how it's going to work. Or so I was into martial arts as a young kid. And uh, I think it was just natural. Um, I was attracted to the wrestlers that had more of like a martial arts kind of style. I really loved ECW and I really, really loved Rob Van Dam. I had like a a big fanboy phase with Rob Van Dam when I was about 12, 13, 14 years old. Then I got into the Indies and then I got into like Japanese wrestling. And once I realized like Japanese wrestling was like a, like a lot of guys were kind of doing martial arts and wrestling and I was like, whoa, it, it kind of gave me um, a purpose it gave me like something that I really was attracted to that I was like, I want to do this. It was like the real like light bulbs going off. Like, this is what I want to do. I loved the presentation. I loved the, the, uh, you know, the, the aesthetic of, of it. And I'm talking about like all Japan pro wrestling, new Japan pro wrestling. I, it just seemed like, it seemed like it was something. So me, you know, mm -hmm. it was so me. Uh, and, and I was attracted to that because I had, you know, Japanese senseis and, and I came up in that environment a little bit and uh, it was just very attractive to me, you know, it was attractive to me. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Once, once, I, once I started watching it and I stopped watching WWF and I became like, I stopped watching like week to week kind of like around 2002. I mean, it's it's not like I just stopped just to stop. I mean, I kind of fell out of being a fan, but I also was like in high school. You, you know, you have other interests. And I kind of just always, as a fan, after a certain point, hey, well, I don't like watching television. I'm not somebody that likes TV shows. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like episodic television. I don't give a shit about storylines really for the most part i mean as a fan i mean sometimes it's pretty cool like you know when there's good angles and stuff like that but what i mean is like i much rather watch matches and i and and back then was when that started to naturally occur where it's like i'm the type of wrestling fan where i just like to watch matches and uh, i have a shorter attention span like i'm not gonna tune in at nine o'clock every week on that same day i'm just not that type of person i don't have that type of attention span you know what i mean I get it. um i could be doing something else or i could be hanging out with my friends or i had a girlfriend or i played in bands it's just being that type of fan i fell out of that pretty early and the japanese wrestling you know kind of uh I, you know the way that they put the cards together the matchups all that stuff i just liked it so much more and i love it even more now now that like i know so much more about it and you know having been involved and having like, gone to japan and just knowing so much more about the way things are and you know like i so much rather enjoy you know, like new japan pro wrestling even now as a fan you know and then well i would have been watching anything uh, any other type of like tv wrestling product i mean i'll support it you know for my friends that are performing or you know who's wrestling here or where i'll, I'll watch something but i'm not the type of guy that's like tuning into a tv show for like two hours uh, you know, a week to, to be all up on all the angles of stories, you know. I don't I don't even watch TV shows, period. People can't even believe it. I've only probably in my lifetime liked maybe like three or four TV shows that I've watched. Like, I'm not a binge watcher. I don't watch Netflix. Like, I'm not just not that type of person. Mm -hmm. No, I completely understand. You know that you have your reasons and who does want to wait till 9 o'clock for a different segment? You know, I agree with you. I always just watch YouTube videos and I watch wrestling matches, and I really don't like, like IWTV, you know, that's that's where it is. It's where you can find a lot of your matches, and, you know, that that's the best place to just binge matches at that point. Yeah, you got to understand, like, the world we live in now, especially, everything is so accessible, and, and we have this, so it's like, you could micromanage uh, everything that even comes into your bubble, wh wh whether it's wrestling, uh, any sort of sort of media whatsoever, music. I don't need to know or care about any sort of contemporary pop music that's coming out. I don't even need to know it exists. 
with the way like my Spotify is laid out, it's only going to suggest songs and things to me that for that ha- that per- or pertain to other things that I like. Mm-hmm. I love that about today's uh, technology and, and stuff like that. Like, I don't even need to know. And I, I know you always hear that term, well, just because you don't know it exists doesn't mean it doesn't or whatever. Well, sure, but I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, it may as well not exist because it doesn't exist in my world. Yeah. So I don't really care. You know what I mean? I'm just, I've always kind of had that real elitist, hardcore nerd, uh, you know, mentality and i think that comes from being so into heavy metal music growing up Mm -hmm. um so it kind of carried over into everything else in my life and you know i i'm pretty proud about that so awesome i completely understand were you ever a comic fan like a like a superhero fan yeah it's funny actually i was just reading this one the other night i actually got this It's like an essential of all the Sabretooth, that, Sabretooth. That, that first limited series of Sabretooth. I got this in the UK, actually, in 2016. I found it in one of my boxes, and it's such an awesome little novel of a uh, you know, little compilation of all those first few Sabretooth comics. I'm sure you've seen this this one before. You yeah. Know, you, you, you have to know what this is. But yeah, I got a lot, when I went over to the UK, yeah, I got a lot of this yeah. stuff. That they only published really in the UK. I'd go to like comics shops and. Sabretooth is an awesome character. Um, I don't want to tell you like what I'm into because I don't want to. It's not about me. But are you more of an Avengers or X Men type guy? Because I feel like you're an X Men type guy. Um, I don't. Um, here's another thing. I'm like going back to the wrestling. I don't like any of the Marvel movies. I don't pay attention to any of that crap. Uh, I liked the first like two Spider Man films. From the early 2000s, I remember that, but I, I never even liked Batman or um, like the one with the Heath Ledger Joker. I'm kind of just, like I said, I'm kind of like a super, everybody zigs, I zag, fuck that. It's too cool for me. Um, I definitely like the X-Men. I have a lot of X-Men comics. I, yeah. I don't really give a, give a shit about the Avengers, to be honest. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, individually, I like some of those characters, and I do have comics from some of those characters, but, you know, I'm I have... I have a lot of uh, the early 90s X-Men stuff that you'd probably like to see. Maybe you'll send it over and then we'll talk about it. But yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah so I'm not going to ask you if you're a Marvel or DC fan because I think, you know, Marvel is definitely the best when it comes to comics in the sense. I definitely have more Marvel comics than I do have DC comics, that's for sure. All right, awesome. All right, let's go back to wrestling. I'm sorry, I'm a comic fan too. I just had to ask. Because cool, I, I, could tell, I could tell that you're a comic fan. So let's talk about Japan. How was it? Have, you could tell I'm a comic member. I got Judge Dredd right there on the wall, you know? Yeah, I so. see. And then I think I have Shredder. Do you have Shredder right there, too? Yeah, it's a painting of Shredder. That's awesome. Yeah. From, from the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. Amazing. So, yeah. So, back to what I said. Uh, let's talk about Japan. Because that's a, that's a whole different world. It's a whole different, you know, crowd. How was it when you stepped foot in Japan, when you were about to have your first match? Were you, like, like, I'm sure you were probably nervous. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on you to be, you know... Uh, up with the crowd because if the crowd hates you you could see it immediately if the crowd loves you you can also hear that immediately so yeah i yeah i wasn't too worried about them hating me as much as i was just worried about you know definitely being nervous because it was such a big special moment for me um i knew that there was uh, a, a i had a great opponent to work with and that wasn't an issue uh japan is the type of place where I've wrestled in Canada. I've wrestled for AAA in Mexico. I wrestled in Canada many times for different promotions. I wrestled for AAA in Mexico. I've wrestled for a ton of indies all over the UK. I've traveled to all these different countries and uh, done a bunch of cool stuff. You know, I always say you have a lot of experiences. Don't get your hopes too up because sometimes things don't exactly pan out the way you expect it to. Um, or don't, you know, sometimes just keep your expectations kind of low, you know, Mm -hmm. Japan is the type of place where it far exceeded any expectations you could possibly have and was better than you could even imagine. It's just, it's unbelievable place of pure, pure, pure pro wrestling and, and like pro wrestling is like, uh, Tokyo is like pro wrestling paradise or kingdom or something there's like all these stores you could go and buy stuff at and there's so they're everywhere and it's like 
the, the fans are just so cool. They're so they're so awesome. They're so supportive. They treat you like you're a fucking movie star, like you're like you're like you're a rock star, and you know you. you and even if it's on like a show where there's only like four or five hundred people, even if you're on a show and there's like a hundred people, you know, if if they like you, they love you. They if they, if they like you, they really really are into you. And they're supportive, like I said. That they they love to buy merchandise. They love to to give you gifts. Um, they're just like so into it. It's really admirable to see like how real it is to some of these people. Whereas, like you know, a lot of the fans over here really like. Sometimes you wonder if they actually really like this or not, or if they're just, just. You know, if they actually really do enjoy it, why do they even watch it, or why are they involved in this? If it's just like seems like all the. <clears throat> ever want to do is cut it down but uh yeah japan <clears throat> is like a different level yeah all right i mean i've i've heard a lot of stories about wrestlers going to japan and i know that it's very very different the rules are completely different even in the ring and you know out the ring and do you have any stories any story that you'd like to share about your time in japan like it could be a fun one it could be a learning experience just someone to get the idea of what it is to really wrestle in Japan and like learn in Japan. Like I said, the crowd is, uh, and the fans are really, really, uh, into it. They're very supportive. So they're very attentive and they're paying really close attention, especially if like you're somebody that goes there and you have a, a name and maybe it was kind of like talked about, but like I was, it was talked about before you went there. There's maybe they're just judging by uh, something they may have seen or heard, or the, maybe the way you come off. If they're, you could tell when they're like maybe expecting something, you know, or you're expecting you to be good or expecting to, you to be to stand out. And when you when you win them over, I'm telling you, it's like it's like nothing else but the the spirit in Japan with pro wrestling is so much, it's so much different than it is here. You know, the, the camaraderie and the respect for the business kayfabe is still very much a thing, very much a thing. Uh, and I know a lot of people can't, can't, can't even believe that here because it's like kayfabe doesn't even really exist at all in a lot of ways. And most people will argue that that's like a great thing, but in Japan kayfabe is, is still very much alive in a lot of ways and i think it's fucking awesome there's still a real divide between the pro wrestlers and the fans you know whereas here it's like it's kind of especially in the indies it could tend to the where you get to the point where like the lines are blurred between like what what, what you know between the fans and the wrestlers and and uh, the people that are running stuff and the fans it's it's, it's weird. I can't explain it. Japan is, is just a totally, totally different beast, you know? Where, I get it. Uh, it's, it, they take their pro wrestling pretty, they take their pro wrestling pretty seriously. And even the stuff that maybe it doesn't seem like they take it too seriously, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different stuff in Japan, something like that Gato move, right? They kind of, it's kind of like that, that interesting apartment wrestling show. It's, you know, but even, what they're doing it's it's done with uh you know with with it's done it's done well it's done it's done with a sense of of uh of quality you know it's it's not it's in japan i would say that even the a lower tier indie guy you'll never hear of ever who just does really small indie stuff is probably a better fundamentally trained pro wrestler than a majority of the people here on the Indies, you know what I mean? I, I would, I would argue that. Um, and I saw that with like my own eyes. So it's, it's, it could talk about the differences and the things that stuck out to me about wrestling in Japan. I had some interesting experiences. I had some great matches. I had a real interesting match for a company called Dove Pro Wrestling. Now this is a real indie, indie company. Mm -hmm. that they where they they actually play they have a, a famous dj play music while the wrestling matches take place so this is already like this is a, a different concept altogether that you wouldn't expect right in japanese wrestling 
and uh, the fans are kind of like around the ring standing, drinking beers and stuff, kind of like what you'd see in a place like Beyond Wrestling or something, you know? And uh, it's, it was awesome. But in my match, um, one of my, I was in a tag team match with three Japanese guys, so I'm the only person in the match that speaks, you know, English. I could communicate and, you know, a little Japanese at this point, not as nowhere near as, as much or as good as I can now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, enough to, all right, we're going we're gonna to have a tag team match. We're going to wrestle these two other guys. What, in, the, in the opening of the match, the, the exchange between the first, two, the first two guys to be in the ring, one of my opponent's shoulder was completely separated mm-hmm. just in a freak accident. Somehow, some way, like, we got through that match for another, like, maybe 10 minutes with the other with the guy literally being tended to on the outside by like you know emts Mm. and then like towards the end of the match he's grabbing my leg and stopping me from getting in the ring trying to break up pins i mean this guy it was like he really was hurt he was and he was he could this whole match basically was was had was diff was Different than what it was supposed to be. Let's just put it that way. I, I hate to say it, but it's such a it was such an interesting experience. I have to be a bit transparent. But still, that guy I remember is uh, he was he was still trying to get to, to 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 he was still fighting even after like realizing his shoulder was dislocated or whatever it is, and the EMTs were like wrapping him up. He still was tr- trying to stop me from getting in the rail. It was. It was a great experience. I remember saying at that point, I'm like, damn, I'm wrestling in Japan right now. I have no, I have no idea what's going on. Or at Zero One Pro Wrestling, me and Matt Justice, we were, like, putting dudes through Japanese tables. Um, I'm going out to eat sushi with, like, Masao Tanaka. That was, like, an experience. That was one of those, like, everything's going exactly the way it needs to go type moments, things like that, where it's like, I'm getting invited out to eat sushi with uh, the Masao Tanaka, who's the first, he was in the first Japanese wrestling match I ever watched. You know, that, that's, that's, that's a shoot. So that was pretty cool. I'm sitting next to this guy talking about <laughs> Japanese heavy metal music and stuff and eating sushi and drinking beers with him and his friends, not even other wrestlers, <laughs> him and his friends. It was surreal, surreal experience. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's an awesome story. I'm happy to hear it. Also, I do want to apologize. Apparently, there's some kind of construction going up there. So, if it happens, just speak over it, all right? My, my apologies about that. All right. Let's talk about your journey now, a little bit more. I, mean, I know you're steady Evolve and OGCW. What happened first? Where did you originally, you know, what was your big break in a, in a company? Like, like, one that was televised, you know, how, what started for you? I've been on the indies for so long. <laughs> I, I've been doing it for so long without the help of any companies with television. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was definitely, I, w- I always think it was a detriment to me, but it ended up almost being like a blessing. It's just that I, I, I mean, I wrestled for, we, I did a thing for a, uh, w- through Evolve for NXT in like 2018 with my tag partner, Jaka, but it was like we wrestled at like WWE Access, mm-hmm. WrestleMania. Um, and that didn't really lead to anything. Uh, I we were kind of like I, I getting out the door of Evolve. Evolve was kind of like crumbling at that point. Anyways, mm-hmm. it was really not cool. It was just kind of crappy, and um, I mean, there's always I was always so much more into the indie stuff. I loved when I first debuted at PWG. That was that was like a real oh. cool moment. Yeah, PWG was um, amazing. You know, growing beyond wrestling over the years was awesome. Being a part of GCW's growth the last few years has been, like, incredible. Um, But I would say, like, definitely the New Japan stuff the most because you got to understand something. Before the pandemic happened, I had all of this stuff going on, but I wasn't, like, working for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I was working for all these other companies. Mm -hmm. So I was going to go back to Japan in April and do, like, another kind of, like, mini tour of the indies and stuff that I was doing. Obviously, the pandemic happened, and uh, it was kind of around the same time I just started to manifest the idea of like I think I should, I think I should try to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think like after I went to Japan and I saw how well I did, and 
and I kind of like started putting, you know, examining the landscape and coming up with some goals and thinking about the future. I was like, New Japan is it, man. New Japan is just far and away the best wrestling company in the world. You know, if I'm going to wrestle for a, for a big wrestling company, it's probably not going to be WWE or AEW. I, I, I want to wrestle in New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's mm-hmm. my main goal. So I, uh, I, uh, you know, saw that they started that NJPW Strong show, and I was like, oh, man, like, this is my opportunity because we, we have no clue. I mean, we still don't. We still don't know what's going to happen here. True. It's been that long, but it's like, you know, it just makes it – it's been – the, the, the time elapsed has made it easier to kind of just, like, let go of thinking about it constantly, but had no idea what was going to happen here. So, you know, I kind of just shot my shot and – you know, now I'm wrestling for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that when I first uh, got my foot in the door there, even though it's it was you know kind of different and it's been a little unconventional given the circumstances of the the world at this time. Mm-hmm. And and what makes it even sweeter and makes it even better is New Japan Pro Wrestling has treated me so well, and there's just such a great company and to have the same idea and the same vision, you know, just having been privileged to, to, to see firsthand the way Shibata san trains the young lions in the LA dojo, the shared mindset between those guys and myself, the camaraderie in that locker room and that nucleus of guys, I want to work for a company where I agree with the way the company does things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just like a given. That's a, that's a no brainer, right? That's what everybody would want. And, uh, I just, I can't say enough good things about new Japan and, uh, I'm so happy to be working there. And I, you know, I believe that, that firmly is one of the main reasons that opened the door for me to go to ring of honor, you know, become ring of honor tag team champions, have that opportunity. And, and just uh, basically just running over Ring of Honor since I got there. So, <laughs> you know, New Japan, New Japan definitely was uh, one of those moments for me that I think definitely solidified me, put me on the map in a different way. But you know, you can't take away from GCW and all the the, the grinding through that True. era of the pandemic. Those, that, the first like real big chunk of it they you know we never stopped running shows yeah. and I got put in some good positions to pick up some opportunities there that that match with John Moxley I, uh, I just wanted to talk about that match you know you know I mean th- th- those were big d- you know door opener type matches and opportunities for somebody in my position and to get that even after having lost so much that was upcoming from before the pandemic, you know, it's, it's what's gotten me to this point now. So I mean, you know, like I said, the last like year and a half of this pandemic shit. Yeah. It sucked, but man, it ended up being like almost like a blessing for me, you know, in a way, in a lot of ways. I was literally going to say that. I was like, is it a, is it a curse in the skies type of thing? Cause wouldn't you have been possible? If it like, would your opportunity have been impossible if not for the pandemic? Yeah, you know, it's all it's a nor here or there. So everything worked out this way, and and uh, because of the pandemic, because of all the time off and the downtime, I was able to link up with Josh, my friend Josh Barnett, mm-hmm. and begin training extensively. And spending a lot of time together and kind of like just really helping level up my game in a lot of different ways that I've also helped get me into this position now where I'm at. It's because, like I said before, it took me a long time to become the pro wrestler that I am now. And uh, I feel like more so than ever, especially in the last like two years, for example, the growth and the trajectory is just like so much faster because of the company I keep because of the training that I uh, that I'm 
you know, constantly pursuing Mm -hmm. and just the mentality, the mindset, the learning about the business in different ways that being exposed to smarter people who have been around a lot more smarter people that I actually respect, you know, respect goes a long way for me. That's, that's, that's the deal. And I, you know, if I don't respect you or or, chances are, I don't want to work with you and Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, or, you know, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't care. You know? So I, I, when, when I'm, having knowledge passed on to me from somebody that I respect who learned these things from people that I worship essentially, you know what I'm saying? Like an Antonio Inoki. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> you know, that's what I want. That's what, what I want. And that's awesome. Cause you don't hear a lot of people saying that, but you know, that's what makes the company strive. Like something like new Japan, you need wrestlers who want to do, what they're offering, you know what I mean? It's not like AW, it's not like WWE. There are no like every week of matches. There are something like the G1 Climax. We gotta wrestle almost every day, you know, five stars, you know. It's, it's very different. So for you wanting to do it, that's what makes the company strive as well. I like the way that they run their system, man. I like the way, I like their business model of live events, you know, shorter TV stuff. Uh, it's not like, TV content, 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 TV, 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 TV. Like WWE is just, and you know, it's, it's just, it's a totally different ball game here. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different ball game, and I get it. I get it. It's a system that they that's been developed and built and, and worked on and produced for ever and ever and ever. But you know, I just like the way other people do it better. I guess I don't know. Awesome, and I do want to talk about you know Josh Barnett and you know your match with Moxley. I think you and him have a lot of, you know, the same interests, you know, when he left his company, he also said how New Japan was his goal from the start of, you know, when everything's over, how he wants to see that. How was it fighting him? How was it even having a conversation with him? Because I'm sure you guys talked wrestling. I'm sure you guys talked a little bit more about the history. Moxley is a stud, man. Moxley, Moxley has, I mean, Moxley's been extremely successful. He's... He's got to be like a millionaire, right? <laughs> or, I mean, he's he's done he's done so well for himself. That guy shows up to training, and and works just as hard, if not harder, than everybody anybody else in the room. You know, and I'm talking about shoot shoot training, learning catch wrestling. You know, submission wrestling, get, just getting down on the mats and learning and and grinding it out and training. And he shows up, man, and he works super hard he's he is he keep he's always wants to learn something different wants to learn something new um i've trained with him a bunch of times i've had plenty of conversation with him he's a great guy he's a very very smart mind for the business and he's passionate about what he's passionate about he's a great example for for guys i think you know if if you don't do something you don't want to do you know we all have to do it do that in some capacity at some point but, you know, if you could get yourself in a position like that where you could call your own shots and you could do your own thing, whatever makes you happy, you know, whatever makes you happy. Pro wrestling can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to just be whatever the WWE wants you to believe it is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that, I think he's a, he's a great example of somebody who's just doing his own thing. And I mean, he, you know, and I think he's a, he I think he's a he's a great example of of what's happened the last few years he's one of the the guys who led that that charge of like no wwe is is not the only way you know i'm gonna go do my own thing and you know check it out it's gonna be pretty cool i think i like moxley i think he's a great guy that's awesome and you know i i I guess i'm a fanboy i also do i don't want storylines but i do want matches and i do want to see you and him go again you know he is currently in your home in gcw he's doing that and he's he goes to new japan so Hopefully we'll get. I can tell you now. I think if we did it again now. It would be, it would be <laughs> something else because we've trained together so much now. But also, I I did love teaming with him when we teamed up against uh, Nagata and Ren. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Now that was awesome, and that one definitely. Oh, that thank you, Mox. You know that one was was dope, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. No, you you and him. Those are those are clinics. You guys hit five star clin. You know those are. Different, those are out of this world because it's just how good both of you are and, and how technical you are and how quick you are. You know, it's it's a different, not everyone's got this style of wrestling. 
But you and him got it, and you guys can fight for years and have five stars. But let's let's talk about Ring of Honor for a little bit, because you know we're, we're gonna end it with New Japan. That's 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 the end goal, obviously. But let's talk about Ring of Honor. How was it going into Ring of Honor? Like you said, when when we when you the media, it was on their take. Were you were you more of a product in Ring of Honor? And I'm not trying to like be like like rude in the sense. It's like did they control more of your stuff than you could? Was it like one of those things? To be honest, no. I mean, the Ring of Honor for me personally has been a blast. Mm-hmm. I love working there. I do. I think uh, I think it's a great locker room, a great group of guys, a great group of good brothers. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm just like laughing my ass off whenever I'm working there. Uh, it's just a good time great people to work with and uh i've enjoyed everything i've done so far in ring of honor i really i really have i'm great i'm so grateful that uh that opportunity presented itself and it's worked out the way it was because i listen i i i was a huge ring of honor fan Mm -hmm. i mean i was a big ring of honor in a lot of ways i mean is the led me to the water you know what i mean but it, it was like it exposed me and a lot of fans from that time period to so much of that Japanese wrestling that, you know, if it wasn't for ring of honor, like, you know what I opening, I I mean, the first time I saw stuff that really changed my whole life was pro wrestling. Noah Kenta and Marafuji and that whole era. I was there for that live. You know, I saw that stuff for the first time then because of ring of honor, but at that point, I had already been a Ring of Honor fan and been going to the shows for like four years, five years. So I just, I grew up with Ring of Honor. So now it's funny. I'll be sitting in my living room and I have a, you know, I have a subscription to the Ring of Honor <laughs> Honor Club, of and, which is a great service. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody uses that service. I'm not just putting it over because, you know, I'm, I work for the company, but we're, it's like, if you like Ring of Honor, you just go back. What year do I want to go to? 2005. All the shows, open the shows. All the matches are individual, like, files, and it's all easy to navigate. I love it. So I was watching tons of Ring of Honor the last few months. And uh, I'll just, like, look over by my record player, and I'll, I'll have to, I would keep the belt over there. I'm just, like, <laughs> laugh. Like, ha. <laughs> the Ring of Honor tag belts on the floor over there. <laughs> like, you know. It's just funny. It's just funny to me because I did always want to wrestle at Ring of Honor. And, um, you know, regardless of, of what happens with, with that or what happens with Ring of Honor, I've put my stamp on it. And you can't take that away. So it's there forever and it's never going to go away. That's awesome. All right. And I hope I didn't offend you in any way by, you know, what I said in that sense. It's just, you know, everyone's always got a different experience. And I'm happy you have a great experience there. And, you know, it's a great locker yeah. room. No, no. Ring of Honor is, is, is honestly one of the, like I said, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because I've gotten to this point now where I can pretty much do whatever I wanted. And I guess Ring of Honor likes that, you know, and uh, could just be myself completely. I don't have to. I don't have to I've gotten to that point, you know, where I'm comfortable and just completely doing my own thing. And that's what works for them. So, hey, that's awesome because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be me regardless. I'm not going to be anybody else or be someone else. It's not, it's never going to happen. So, got it. All right. Something I do like to do on in my interviews is when, you know, fans are watching. And they want suggestions for matches. I like to ask the wrestler what are some of his matches that, you know, he definitely wants the fans to check out. You know, some of my favorites are, you know, your matches with Brian Cage. You had a couple of them and those were all really good. Filthy Tom Lar was also one that I love seeing. I think there's like multiple. I've seen like five already, two or three like around there. So it's like I love, you know, all your you know matches there. So what are some matches that you believe the fans can check out? Check out my recent matches with Starboy Charlie. Mm-hmm, GCW. Some of the recent GCW shows, yeah. My my, my matches with Starboy Charlie. Um, God, I just have so many. I mean, <laughs> so much of the stuff I've done for for New Japan, I really am happy about a lot of the stuff 
a Ring of Honor band, a lot of the stuff at Ring of Honor that I've done the last few months, everything, a lot of these Violence Unlimited six-man tags, eight-man tags, tag, these tag matches, whether it's me and Brody tagging or me and Homicide tagging, did a lot of good tag matches in New Japan, a lot of good tag matches in Ring of Honor, all recent stuff. Um, I would check like all that stuff out. Usually anything I'm doing at like Bloodsport, love my, my matches with Cobb, Kratos, Moxley, uh, my match with Shane Mercer. I mean, man, I really loved my match me and Joey did at Spring Break. Mm -hmm. The ladder, the you know, the, the chair, all that stuff. I'd, I just, listen, man, I enjoy everything I do. I'm not going to lie. It's very rare I come out of something these days and I'm like, ah, God, whatever, you know. And it's because I'm, I'm honestly having a good time. And if I'm having a good time and I'm, like, loving what I'm doing, then chances are, like, it's probably going to work out. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I suggest anything from, like, the last year. If you guys want to go <laughs> check some of my stuff out, just please watch New Japan Strong. You know, watch New, watch NJPW Strong, support Ring of Honor, support New Japan, support the companies I work for, Game Changer Wrestling. This is the stuff that, like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hot. It's, you know, GCW is on fire right now. They're like a company like that. I mean, just did a match. I think they were the LA most. Last. I think they were the most Love striving it. during COVID. I think during like COVID, like, they were they were striving with their shows because I, I feel like everybody woke up to to that. Like I remember, you know, I watch a lot of GCW stuff, but I feel like when we were all home, sitting down, not doing anything, GCW would still present shows and and they wouldn't like stop and it was amazing stars that came out of there like Starboy Charlie like you know how you mentioned him I mean look at the crowds look at the buzz look at the buzz it's what it's about man it's what it's about a lot of people don't want to accept it that's what it is and uh GCW just ha has some magic right now and to be a part of that to have been a part of that the last two the last three years or so I mean that's that's what I got in this for you know mm -hmm. that's, that's why I became a pro wrestler uh Indie wrestling, indie wrestling. I fell in love with indie wrestling, and to be a part of that, and to be in such a, a, you know, a cornerstone of something that's that's becoming so important to to pro wrestling on this level. I mean, it's there's nothing better than that. Awesome. So I do want to mention because you brought it up, you know, blood sport. Uh, how is it training for that match, or even how is it in that match? Because there's no ropes. It's very different than anything anyone has seen. You got to be there to really understand it, and you got to participate in the match to really explain it. So, sure. Help me out here. Tell me, you know, how it's like to wrestle in a match like that. It's just definitely out of the box, and uh, a different challenge, you know, uh, for someone that it, maybe it's. Uh, is new to that or trying it for the first time or doesn't have so much of a grappling acumen or understand um you know that there is so much more that is possible even without taking away an aspect of the the, the wrestling ring that's there in all these other matches that you have you know it forces you to have to maybe pursue a different type of training you know, trying to understand a different, a different perspective of pro wrestling. Uh, and that overall is going to make you a better pro wrestler, period. So it's kind of a lot to wrap your head around. But I would say like, you know, after you, 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 let's say you try it, you do it, you, you, you do a match like that. You're in a, a match or two like that, a couple matches like that. <laughs> And maybe you start to realize, okay, how am I going to open up doors in this type of environment with what I'm doing? Well, maybe I need to pursue different. I need to pursue a different style of training. Mm -hmm. I need to really dive into this and put my head into it, and uh, and understand and try to understand what this really is about. That pro wrestling is so much bigger than just you know what we know it as conventional you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah you know it's when i first watched it i i didn't know what to think of it i was like is this is wrestling but like without the ropes without you know 
more space to wrestle. It's like, how do you do what you do? And then I realized it's more of a technical game. It, it's, it's a very intelligent, you know, match type of thing. You have to be, intel- like, you have to be technical to, to really wrestle in that match. Am I, am I it right? It can be. It can be. That's the thing. It can be. You can be more technical. Or maybe you could just punch someone in the face. Like, you know, it's a... I feel like it's just like anything else. It's it's open to be whatever, you know, you could make it to be. Mm-hmm. You just have to... It's just a different... It's just a different approach altogether. It's a new challenge to somebody who's maybe never been in that situation before. Even somebody that's been in that situation before. Many times, it's always... It's always a different... A different way of telling a story. Perfectly said. So let, let's, you know, we are running down our time. And I do want to end it in probably the best way possible. You had a big, huge match against Minoru Suzuki coming up. You know, talk to me on that. What are your emotions going into it? What is your game plan? I obviously, don't give me too much information. But alone, what, what are you, what's your main goal from that match? Well, I mean, as far as game plan is concerned, I mean, I think I've, I trained in the last almost two years, basically going into this match. Mm-hmm. You know, learn like really going after catch wrestling, and I mean, I got the best trainer in the world, man. I mean, I have Josh Barnett, and uh, for learning catch wrestling and learning, you know, how to really mess people up. <laughs> you know, I've I've grown tremendously as a shoot wrestler. Whereas, like, you know, I may have been, like, a decent grap- submission grappler. I had some experience. But I'm in a whole different, like, kind of area now because of my training with Josh. And it's basically a lot of the same training fundamentals and background that Suzuki comes from. Mm-hmm. Because he was trained pretty much by, like, the same people, all kind of very similar stuff and around the same people. And it's just interesting how this, it's all becoming full circle and how all these, these different parallels and, and things like that. And, you know, so having a game, I mean, I don't think I could have, been, I could be more prepared, you know, and I do understand that this is still pro wrestling and there's plenty of guys who don't have that background who are going to wrestle someone like Suzuki, but I don't think that there's anybody that could truly take it to him. Like I could, especially here right now, just knowing what I know, knowing him as well as I do. I mean, he is in my top 10. He's one of my all time favorite wrestlers. I've watched literally hundreds of Minoru Suzuki's matches since I was probably 16 years old. I mean, I'm more ready for that match than anything. In any match with somebody like him, you know, it's just, it's the style of wrestling that I, that I love. And, I, and it's something that I've really gone out of my way to try and understand as best as humanly possible. So to be able to bring that plus my own thing into it against somebody like him, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, you know, it's really exciting. Everyone, including me, the fans, where I'm ready to see this match, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be very entertaining just for the amount of years that you've been wrestling and the amount of stuff that you've been learning to go up against him and, and exactly just the way you said it, just how you feel that you're the most prepared person to verse him right now. That's probably the best, you know, thing anyone could say. That's confidence and that's awesome. So where do people follow you? How do people support you? We, we want like anyone who wants to give you any kind of love, how can they do it? Instagram at born dirty, die dirty. I'm on Twitter at dirty Dickinson. I have a pro wrestling tea story. You go pick up a t-shirt if you want. Um, uh, that's definitely the best place to find me and you know follow please follow New Japan Pro Wrestling watch NJPW Strong watch Ring of Honor support GCW I mean if you don't you're missing out so you know watch Beyond Wrestling watch all the good stuff alright awesome thank you Chris thank you everyone for listening we'll see you guys next time take it easy man